we are scheduled to head into absolute deflation within the next four weeks, which means money supply will be shrinking on a quarterly annualized basis within the next four weeks, almost guaranteed. With this week's silver report for Arcadia Economics and today, we're going to go into a little bit of Austrian business cycle theory. We're going to go back in time, 93 years to 1929, and why. According to Austrian business cycle theory, we are on the verge of a 1929 style crash in asset prices. Exactly what will be included, I believe, will be bonds and stocks and somewhat commodities, but less so precious metals. It is very possible that the precious metals, including gold and silver, will dip very temporarily in terms of the spot price. However, physical gold and silver will not fall significantly and may even rise. And what is about to happen, I believe, is going to trigger the final Fed pivot that will destroy the dollar and all the currencies that are pegged to it in one way or another. We are on the verge of deflation in a monetary sense. I'm not talking about consumer prices. I'm not talking about the prices of anything. I'm talking about the amount of money in the banking system. It is about to fall in an absolute sense on a quarterly average basis. And I'm going to go into these calculations and explain to you exactly what I'm seeing. These are calculations that were taught to me by my teacher in economics, the late and great Robert Wenzel. And if he were alive today, he'd be sounding the panic alarms. Anyone that thinks that stocks and bonds have hit a temporary bottom and are headed higher from here and the bear market is over is frankly wrong, assuming these numbers are correct. It could be that the Fed is simply just miscalculating them or adding tabulating them wrong. And I can't rule that out completely. This Silver Report is brought to you by Fortuna Silver Mines. I just came off a call with the CEO, Jorge Ganoza, and I asked him a simple question. How long would silver have to crash to around $10 as it did in March 2020 for Fortuna to be seriously affected? We saw in 2008 that silver went down significantly for about four to five months. And in March 2020, it was about two to three weeks. I don't expect it to be much longer than that this time. And he answered that in order to cut costs, to intentionally cut costs, silver would have to be depressed to that level at a, for around a year or two, which I don't see happening. So even if silver collapses to, let's say, $10 for two or three weeks as it did in March 2020, it wouldn't affect the company fundamentally, and we shouldn't expect it to. So that is the time to be investing in gold and silver equities generally, and that is the hardest time to do so. Let's just go into what's happening on the COMEX. We have a delivery day today. Not too many deliveries, about above, above 3,000 contracts were left open, but the silver registered supply has broken 70 million ounces for the first time since 2018, and here's the chart. Here are the registered silver ounces. We are at 69.75 million ounces left. Is there any significance to the breaking of 70 million ounces? No, it's just a nice round number and we are below it now. We have consistently fallen since silver squeeze, whatever is happening, it is continuing. There have been bumps higher, but the slope since silver squeeze has been pretty constant and we just need to keep going and we, they will run out eventually. The next chart I wanna show you is something that you might not have realized. And we ask ourselves, why is silver down in this environment with inflation in the near double digits or what they call inflation? And if we look at this chart, this is the base metals index, the S&P GSCI industrial metals index versus silver. Silver is this line over here. They look kind of similar, but you see here, this is the 2011 high. Basically what you are seeing here is the fact that silver is still acting like an industrial metal. Because in this environment, without a panic, a monetary panic where people just buy physical silver because they don't know what else to do, which is coming, silver is basically an industrial metal. It used to be a monetary metal and it will return to be a monetary metal when it is needed. And that time is fast approaching. In the meantime, it is an industrial metal. It is slightly more stable than industrial metals like iron and copper and lead, etc. cetera. But you see here, since 2011, it is basically trading in line with the industrial metals index. 
And so the fact that industrial metals have fallen so hard, about 40% since the March 7th nickel squeeze, industrial metals have fallen about 40%, silver has fallen less, but that is the reality of how silver trades right now. It's not going to last much longer, and you'll see why in a second. We are at a very rare moment in monetary history that was last repeated in 2008, September 2008 to be exact. And it, was, it also occurred in June 1929, four months before the stock market crash. And I'll show you that chart as well. This chart shows you the annualized change in the quarterly average money supply. Is that there is a one week money supply average and there's a four week and there's also a 13 week. If you take the 13 week money supply average, that is the quarterly average and that helps smooth out bumps. When the quarterly average falls on a quarterly basis, so, you, so let's say you take the quarterly average from let's say April 30th and you calculate the annualized percent change from the 13 week quarterly average in January 1st, that would be 13 weeks about, let's say, then that is the money supply growth rate for that week. If you follow my cursor here, this right here, this line, the 0% line, once this is crossed, that means deflation in a monetary sense, meaning the money supply in the banking system is falling in an absolute sense on a quarterly basis. This almost never happens. The last time it happened was in 2008. We'll get to the 2009 numbers in a second. I will explain those in one second and what they mean. 2008, the last time it happened before that, I think was in 1987, October 1987. You know what happened then? 2008, the money supply shrinks on a quarterly annualized basis and you have a stock market crash exactly around here. And then you have QE1 and the big money printing that happened in the immediate aftermath of that. And the money supply growth rate skyrocketed to just under 20% here. And then you had another deflationary force as more debt was being liquidated. Then you had another trip below zero in 2009. So why didn't the stock market crash back then in 2009? Because it already had. The prices of stock was already way below what it was over here. And so another venture below zero in absolute deflation would not affect stock prices as much because they were already down. Same thing in 2010. They were already down. They hadn't reached back to their highs yet. Now, I have extrapolated the one week calculations for money supply over the next four weeks. And even if I am generous, making it the most expansive monetary June in 10 years, we are scheduled to head into absolute deflation within the next four weeks, which means money supply will be shrinking on a quarterly annualized basis within the next four weeks, almost guaranteed. That will be the first time this has happened since 2008. This table comes from the book, America's Great Depression by Murray Rothbard. He is the great Austrian school economist. And here he calculated the annualized change in money supply growth from 1921 to 1929. We see here, the roaring 20s had their roots in the fact that the money supply was increasing at a rapid rate all the way from 1921 so it looks like 1927, it slowed down in 1928 and came to a stop at 0.7% annualized in June, 1929. Four months later on October 29th, 1929, we had that day which sparked off the Great Depression. Point being, we are about to enter what looks to be between four to six weeks of absolute deflation from a monetary standpoint, shrinking money supply. And when that happens, banks are the first casualties. And it already looks like the European banking system is under severe stress with the ECB about to start hiking rates. This is Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse is right now the weakest bank in the Eurozone. It doesn't matter which one of these crashes first or which one of these goes bankrupt first. When one of them does, the rest of them will. They are all interconnected. Credit Suisse three weeks ago, broke its March 2020 lows and is at a new all-time low. Now, I want to go into one final chart here, back to silver. Below here, we have the physical premium percentage on junk silver. And here, we have the current price of silver coins. Now, there have been three times 
since 2008 when premiums, physical premiums were higher than they are now. That is in 2020 and in 2015, 2016 at the bear market bottom and the 2008 financial crisis. You'll see these three other times, each time the silver price was below where it is now. So what I'm saying is we are now at a point where we are at high, the highest premiums for the current price of silver ever. So yes, the price of silver, the spot price might seem low and yes, it is, but we are still at the highest spot silver price for these current premiums than we have ever been. We know from Austrian business cycle theory that once the money supply stops expanding, a bust sets in. The money supply is set to stop expanding within the next four weeks. For about four to six weeks, it will be on an absolute shrinking basis. Banks cannot tolerate this for very long, and so we are likely to see a European banking crisis very soon, sometime before November. That is going to generate the final deflationary spiral and inspire the final printing round, which will be bigger than any other printing round in the history of finance. Many gold and silver bugs who do not understand this will give up at the last minute. Don't let that happen to you. And consider this. Why is it that the Bank of Germany, the Reichsbank, in 1922, 1923, kept printing despite the rising prices into hyperinflation? The answer is because if they didn't, their banking system would collapse, and they did it anyway, and their banking system collapsed in hyperinflation nonetheless. The natural tendency is towards deflation, and central banks fight that. Nearing the end of the line here, it's time to stay brave and to stay focused and to stay logical. The last deflationary spiral is coming. I see it in the money supply. This could have a temporary negative effect on the silver price, but once the Fed reverses, that will be the final pivot.